<laughs> well, uh, good evening. Uh, I should be extra important anyway. Um, most of you do know Jeff. He has been in the gathering with me for the last uh, 20, 27 years. 27 years. And so far, we have shown here yeah, over the years, yeah. practically since the beginning. Yeah. So um, here we are. So thank you for being with us. And now let me talk. No, no, you let him talk too. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs>
So you're stood there and you, you, you like, you, you're seeing things. And that's how I observe what, what I'm doing. That's how I, <coughs> that's how I observe what I'm, what I'm drawing, basically. It's what I'm memorizing from that. And the lines define ages and form, and they can develop into structural proportions. If you repeat them, they become basic units yeah, of construction of an object. And I don't think you probably can see that in the world. Yeah. The objects um, will remind you of things, they become recognizable, but they're not obviously done like that. I don't aim to make them objects that you, that you, you recognize. It's an instinctive thing, and this is something that comes about. Yeah. Well, I'm also aware of four sides of the canvas, and what I like is the fact that they're floating inside. Um, occasionally, I use the baseline, the, the, the bottom edge, but then they become anchored. Yeah. Um, what I'm also going to come back to when Jerry's finishing off is the drawings become paintings, and that's when they become start a bit more exciting because they use colour. And that colour has got an enormous amount of tension to it. Um, it interacts and it's a kind of melodic type of thing to me. It's, it's tuneful, it's got a musical score sense to it. I feel it has anyway. It's like when I mix a red, I try and mix it as close to as orange as possible, but it's still a red. And this idea of colour uh, has always been part of our sort of education, really, isn't it? And it's it's comes from uh, having three years of abstract painters teaching it, basically, uh, all using lots of very vivid colour and mixing colour, and having uh, colour theory um, lectures. I remember we. we I, they used great packs of colours with a, a whole uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, and you'd have all the U's behind, and then you'd have all the matching grades, and you'd play with those and interact with those, and that, that is something that's given me a, a, a quite a strong uh, feeling for colour. It's nice also, I mean, to look through the like schools of painting and the way colours use different ones. So like, you know, I think I like the word hum, you know, the surface hums. Yeah. And I mean, it's got a life of, it, it's not as, how to just say, if you move on, like the Metis, you get that familiar, a hum. But you move on to Jasper Johns and you get something very different. Yeah. You get this harder, it's more like a, I don't know, a city feel, you know. Well, it, it is a, and it's got a graphic feel to it. Yeah. 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 A, a loose texture. Yeah, yeah it, it's, I uh, we used to call it sort of push and punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the idea of, of yeah. what colour, of which colour you're using and, and, and developing space for colour. Uh, you probably all know about this, don't you? Really? It's good to sort of explain this. But I think that's one of the lectures, really. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much so, yeah. But I think we the fact that's common a bit off of it, we all need to pick it up a bit so that we get the street plastic and all that. Of course, John, I see it, um, I don't know if people are aware of an artist called John McCracken. Uh, they're, um, they call them Finnish fetish artists. And I love that idea because I, I think I'm not really a, a fetish. You know, there's too much on it. But there's something. You go around picking things up and that's it. Oh, yeah. yeah. But what I mean is the Finnish, you know, like the um, John McCrunken, they right. just literally you just get one colour. But it's just immaculate, you know. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's gone over and over again to get yeah. that thing, yeah. And it's that, it's that spatial thing, you know, you're, you're not giving people any, like, uh, this way or that way, other than the illusion. Whereas, like with me, it always, I've always liked marks. 
Yeah. So they can actually read you. Yeah, and then you've got more texture going on yeah. as well, which with your magical mix. Yeah. So this might be, that's what I thought, it might be a nice comparison. So, you know, uh, me doing Michelle and uh, John Lewis, I was a little way because, um, especially when we come out of the same art school, but in a way, we end up being quite different in a way. You know? And also, there's a, just in terms of friendship and what your friends do or whatever, some artists, I think, their work is slow. And someone said, my well, work's quick, you know, you get it straight away. Like and I was only in the studio earlier this year, and he was talking through something about his lines. And then they just opened up a completely other you know, world of his work to me. You know, and I just thought, wow, you know, I wouldn't have got that from seeing a show of his, you know, whatever, but just that little um, insight into the process really helped me, yeah, I mean, help get over barriers of slow work. I mean, uh, you know, there's some work, you know, you I mean, it, it takes a while to speak yeah. to, to swallow it, to get you know, the yeah, yeah. It all, because they, they all, I, I believe that they move as well, but that, that takes a while. <laughs> they do move. So it's, I just think, and I think I've, I've always accepted my work is quick, you know, yeah. just bang, you know, just bang, you know. But, um, but you know, there's, um, there's more than just the first explosion. I mean, I'm quite wondering if, well, instead of like, we move on to another subject or something, does uh, anybody want a question or a comment or anything? Or, um, okay. I'd really like to know about the pieces that you're showing here. The ones, okay, yeah. Uh, well, it was basically, um, I gave my studio to, uh, you got my son room, you're right. So I didn't have a studio, so um, basically it was a kitchen table. So, um, and I was like Roger Hilton, he always said all this fuss about art. He said, go in the garden, dig up some dirt, on the kitchen table, a bit of paper, you can make art. So I thought, I'll try it. You know? <laughs> And then away on the way to the shop in the morning, I, I see bits of plastic and it's always colour. You know, all the odd stuff out there. And um, I mean, that one there, like the flowery one, that's the same in this. So I saw that on the floor with the holes. And then there was a tile chucked down, a bit of, you know, that. And then I suppose in a way I've done flowers for so long, you've kind of got something to aim for, no matter what the thing looks like. Can you end up being a flower? These are getting more relief coming out. Yeah, yeah. From, from your earlier work. Yeah, which has got it's got the same simplicity, but it's uh, it's something which because of the objects that you're using, it's got yeah. a sort of three D type type. Yeah, yeah. And I love this um, another artist friend. I was doing these abstract ones years ago, but I was doing my head my like, three rectangles. Because they were done by hand, they're all slightly different. And she said, Yeah, but they're the same family. And, I, and that notion of, Yeah, okay. And in a way, like the one on the back with the two, in a way, they're very different. One's a big thing, one's skinny, one's whatever. But they, but they belong to the family of quite if you like. Without doing much work, you join them. But there's this difference. and, and my friend, she described it as like a, you get a row of can can dancers, and they all, you look like individually, they're all different, but when you see them, it's the family of them. So it drops into that, and I quite like that, you know. Yeah. You think they're like characters then? They do become individually, yeah. You know, some are just um, that way, some are that way, and, uh, and I like the idea of pushing it, you know, like, um, like, I remember the first invitation I did in Belgium, and then a friend was partner was managing a bingo hall, and I went, I love it, the numbers of bingo halls, and, and I thought, well, with a date, say the 25th of the 3rd, 93, how far apart can you push those, um, and it still be a date? You know, like, I mean, you know, you put them next to each other, it's a date. But, you know, just keep going like that, and then you get this tension, which is lovely, about why, you know, it's like you're being awkward. Why are you going so far apart? And I think, oh, I should do that. 
That's why the last thing was right up to the, the right up, yeah, up to the edge. But um, and then I was, I think a bit, I was doing all this geometric, geometric, geometric. But then through whatever, and I just thought, why am I leaving the world out? You know. So I thought this one was very good. So oh, this was going to be like a, a yellow square, you see. That's it. And then. I thought, I just did that, and it becomes a bloody envelope. <laughs> you know, and, I, and then once the world, what was that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Once the world comes in, then why keep it out? You know, like, um, it, uh, I don't know. But with Sammy John, I mean, you know, I think the world moves in and out, you know? I think some of them are completely happy with them to be, you know, yeah, well, not using the reflective surface. Right. You know, that idea of um, it can it came about through everything that you see or buy, everything is packaged, is finished off, and that that started that idea of of, of like signed and sealed. It was, and that and you can't you can't unwrap it. <laughs> You can't get into it, but it's uh, but it also it, 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 you can walk into it. You see yourself in it, and that's quite important. Right. Quite Quick question, coming back to your work, John. The, the painting on the extreme left, your right, blue one. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a figure there, right? So, and, and did that did that start off as a figure or? No, I don't. I think I tried to explain that earlier. It's something that happens. You know, it, it's an occurrence. It's, it's so you had no idea that the figure not, would end up in... whatsoever, no. Okay. Um, but, but what I did want was the intention of the, of the not that, that diagonal line. It's not straight. And it gives that sort of... It gives a wee push. Yeah, if you look at it. It's just a slight push. And it looks as if it's munching it. But does it start off un <coughs> unintentionally being, yeah. being figurative? But do you then see that figure and then manipulate it? To a certain extent. To, yeah. to become more. It, it, it yeah. feels like there's well, it, there, there like certain that decisions sort of, that, that you've made. Sort of yeah. Yeah, sort of like that you know, it's there. Yeah. So, so there are certain I have, I have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to put it on. There's so that in Guston's work when he moved from being, you know, there were sort of abstracts, whatever. With those smoking chips yeah, and everything. Yeah. But the, the very beginning of all that, you know, it was just like a line and that, and then they were, might become something. You know, before we did the paintings, it was just a thing. And, and that, um, I don't know, it must be what, what got him to make that move because it wasn't popular. And well, he, he said he was fed up and he, he wanted to, to reinvent himself. I don't know much about his, yeah. his biography, but I remember reading about that. And but what it does for me is the quality of that, both sides of that. So the abstract stuff's fantastic. Well, that's that, but, um, and but, that really emphasises itself in the yeah. texture of the paintings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. have you ever think? Do you like the Guston? I don't know. You know the one with the bag of chips is on his tongue. Yeah. You know, and he's having a smoke. Mm -hmm. and, and but the texture is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a great painting. And now, as I've been all those years, we can see him as being beautiful. Yeah, that was the last thing. Well, they, they, they stopped the show at uh, the Tate, didn't they, which is going to be this year? Oh, yeah. uh, because of the hoops. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. which is sad. But I think, um, what if, um, you know, I mean, I suppose I, I don't really know what makes John make art in a way, but you can only know, get an idea of yourself in a way. But, I do think there's a sort of element of madness in the making of art. Well, for me, I know I get carried away and I'll just be doing it, you know, I won't go to bed. And a friend here, John, he pointed out, because I had it on the kitchen table or whatever, he thought, the I was thinking it was the one with the cup of tea. No, the one with the bird, quite like right. Just found a feather on the street and then it became a bird. And then John said, nah, don't worry. 
And obviously, I mean, you know, he left about 11 o'clock at night or whatever. I've also been to go out of bed until I've done something about it. <laughs> you know, it's ruthless, isn't it? Oh, it's ruthless. It is true. I mean, you know, it, you know, you, um, it, and it's, it's the worst thing is when it sort of works. You know, and in a way you can move on, you can move on. But I think the closer you get to it being a good work, the harder those little bits are. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes mm -hmm. it will you just scratch it. Like yeah. yeah. So you have to destroy part of it. Yes. That's, that's quite important. I'm sure you've experienced that. Too, that you get an absolutely fabulous bit of work and you and the other bit doesn't work and you end up destroying the fabulous bit and then sort of like working up it, it's, it's an argument in itself isn't it to start yeah it's not easy it's but it's such a you know it's like, I mean the one over there the, the, the grey one it's just um, they're they're like if you buy those um, little uh, toys uh, like an egg kinder eggs and it's a wrapping and a lovely orange you know but then to that picture there's all these colours and everything, everything, everything. And I know, yeah, 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 yeah. And then something, I've got the devil in me, you know? And I mess up and I'm a great place, it just went swash. You're having that, you're not having all this. <laughs> you know? And that's lovely because it's almost as if like, um, it's almost like you're walking away. Say like you had a friendship for years or something. And it ain't working out. And then the idea will just push you and then you can walk away. You know, I think you've got to get to that. Well, I know, you don't have to, but um, I like getting to that. Where it's important. You know, it's emotional, it's important. It's also incredibly yeah. exciting as well. Yeah. It gets you new things. Yeah. It's the, uh, the, well, it's now, that's what working is about. Yeah. I suppose, yeah. yeah. Do you see that as kind of, uh, resolving it? So does it does it feel like once you've done that, that the peace feels resolved? Not always. No, not always. Yeah. <laughs> it can, yeah. 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 But it's annoying if you but don't. It, it moves on to stage three or whatever, or stage yeah. four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you, I mean, that, you can see that in that one, because there's other things going on which I left. And if it doesn't work, then then I would normally completely disappear mm. and start afresh. And you get that, because you, there's so many layers going on, you can see that, you just build up. And it takes, the, it takes a while for it to... to, to Are you working on several at the same time? Ah, uh, yeah, I've got two, yeah. Mm. Otherwise, that's... Patience. Well, they talk to each other, anyway. Yeah, to a certain extent. Well, they they belong with each other. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean, like the family that he's talking about. <coughs> yeah. yeah. And, I in, and in parallel, you're still drawing. You're, while you're doing the painting, you're still drawing. You're still doing. Always, still, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's a, a first thing I do when I walk in is uh, pick up a pencil, and I have four different sizes. Um, it, it's, uh, now it's become sort of structured um, and I make a mark with one and then pick up another and make a, and, and add on with that. And I just recently got really pissed off because uh, the sketchbooks from Brighton see white, you know them? Well, I, I've been using them for, for like 30 years and I only found out this morning, I thought, why am I finishing this sketchbook so quickly? And I stupidly counted the pages. And we're eight less than normal. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote them an email. <laughs> and you know they're in, they're in folds, you know, that's how you buy in folds. What is one missing? So I checked the ones I got on the shelf, the, the ones that I bought and waited, and they're all uh, five, instead of six, five instead of six. The same price. Um, <laughs> called inflation. That was rude. Fetish, definitely. What's that going to do with so, paper? is expensive, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, it is important that I do that. Yeah, I go through it. Are these absolutely finished, or would you consider finished? Finished. Okay. 
I mean, you cannot touch a surface anymore anyway, can you? Not those. Well, I can, I have done, yeah, you just paint over it. Oh. Last show I went to, I mean, the first show I saw of John's was, must be the 1980s or something, in West London. And um, it actually um, had an enlarger, and then put a tube on it, and drew on the photographic paper. Just it, it was an optical cable on a colour enlarger. Yeah. Mm. It was Which beautiful. Is, yeah. But in a way, I think it, that's why it's a, an interesting comparison because I, I like you know, the surface kind of a bit awkward, you know, a bit rough, a bit. Um, and, but also, I think. Um, yeah, this was on high gloss Fuji Pro. It was yeah. absolutely beautiful paper. It's like 240 grams of, of, of like plastic <laughs> and uh, all completely light sensitive as you dial in the colours uh, you do it all in the dark and you, you, when you're using silicon you're working with the opposite so it's you're, you're dialing in the opposite the colour you're going to get developed it's, uh, it's interesting but you wouldn't be able to see the lines as you're drawing them. No, so that no, that's quite interesting. So they're completely abstract. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. And and also you you can play with the lines as well. Mm. Yeah. That's what I loved the whole the sort of Prague esque uh, black and white photographs of the twenties are gorgeous. Are there any one offs? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean I'm kind of like um also bringing in, you know, this idea of bringing in things to your work, say, that you're doing. And then I, a lot, I want to bring in, like, um, somehow respecting art that I really love, you know. So then instead of, like, um, I was trying to do, like, homage to art or whatever. And, um, but, like, have a go at it in a way. Or, you know, like, I mean, I love Katie Nolan's work. Because I just don't understand it, and I love the fact that someone can make this work, you know. And what it, and then apparently she stopped doing work for years because she got sick of a certain aspect of the art world. But I was pleased to hear that only in the sense that oh, she's very emotional about it. It's important that way. They don't mess about her, you know, blah blah blah, you know. And um, but also like. I remember there was one of that picture over there, the brown in the brown fruit. It's, it started off with I went to the shop to buy some fruit, but it had this, it might be a pear, but it's spiky things, like the nasty things. And then I just thought, oh that's a start. And then off you go, do 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 do, do, do and then you keep adding, 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 adding. But then when I, I used to have a Saturday and Sunday job at the British Museum, and then we were all like artists and mucking on out there. And um to pass the time, a tourist would come up, you know, and instead of saying, no, I help you, you say, well, I hurt you. <laughs> and they wouldn't quite get that you said that, you see. And then they did I do that, you know, we all knew what we were all doing. You know? So then I thought, oh, that's what I can put it on there, you know. So I just said a little bit, that's just my, that's my, I hurt you. you know? Well, no, can I hurt you? That's it. But I do like, I don't know, it's like a way of, um, we've all had our own lives, haven't we, and things that can be pulled in now and again, you know, not, <coughs> I don't think everybody needs to know that, but, I mean, personally, when I, if it's only to do with Marcel Brotas, I love hearing every little snippet, anyone could tell me about <coughs> that, what that happened, what that happened, you know, like, because it all adds up to something amazing, you know, like, um, there's, there's a lot of work that never got made. I mean, I might have said this to everybody in the room, I'll say it again. But there was a piece he was going to do, and it was Europe after the war. And it's a, a field of um, poppies. And then the Russians get one side, the Americans get the other side. So the Russians come along, and they get the lawnmowers out. And they mow it all down, you know, to start again, you know. And the Americans have a rock and roll party, and it all gets crushed. And then it seemed to be trying to say, well, that's two different systems. They're both dominated by <coughs> Britain flat. But the, the point is the future. You know, who's saying what's going to be, you know. I love the fact that 
you know, you can, I mean, everything he made was beautiful looking. But I just sort of pictured that, and I thought if I didn't, like, have my tongue out whenever someone knows him or met him or this, I wouldn't get those little things, you know. And then, um, it, so I do think there's a, a massive social aspect of art that, you know, especially following artists that you, there's something there for you, you know, or, you know, it's unrewarding or personal rather than all mm. Now we're seeing about the poppies regrowing back again the next year. Yeah, so it's to be yeah. Re, re, regeneration or whatever. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, but, yeah, yeah, I like the rock and roll fire, so yeah. Well, I know yeah. there was another lovely one. I'll just tell this last one, and I won't do it anymore about Rotos. <laughs> Rotos is Jerry's greatest favourite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's after the war, so in a way, you see the Americans as occupying Rotos, right? So he's a young man, communist, he was Rotos, and then he goes up to an American soldier with his gun, you know, and he beat him English and just said, oh, you know. Well, you know, uh, basically, you know, we should, we should, you know, all, all men are brothers, you know. And then the actor said, um, yeah, except the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> so then he's, instead of just walking away, he just said it again, you know, yeah, but come on, all men are brothers, you know. And then he did this, and every time he did it, the rifle went up and up and up and up. And there was that point of pushing it to the bit. And, and I think that, I think, oh, I have to do that. I think, you know, there's no point in my life. Maybe there is a point, but I like a lot of art that, that is, is going to go to that bit where it goes wrong. You know, let's get to the bit where it goes wrong. And we're lucky that we might, you know, Occasionally stop it before it goes wrong. Um, you know, but I don't know. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> Any more questions? I'm really interested that you said you do most of your work now on your kitchen table. Does that mean that you don't work big anymore, particularly? Oh, well, I am. Well, you know, I, actually, it's through John. John was a doing a lot of punky stuff years ago. Uh, they did a show in Paris, and I remember I went, why not? Because there wasn't much fun at all, you know. And then uh, friends of theirs, they did a show called uh, Fuck Art, Let's Dance in Paris. And then I think Robin and Tate were all up. They, they, they made it in, this is my memory, what I heard, A4 sheets. So um, I did a thing in Munich recently, and so I thought I've got a massive work, I mean, you know, I couldn't take that. So I did, again, I reproduced it in A4 and hung it. It looked fantastic. It was all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was all together. Yeah. And then, uh, but no, I, I mean, yeah, so um, I think I must probably get a studio in the end. Uh, because it, what do you do? You've got to, you know, help people out. And, you know, <laughs> so I said, no, I've been in there for 30 years. It's a bit painful, but maybe it was a time. You know. Jerry, do you feel you have exhausted what is possible in the kitchen? Sorry? You have exhausted what is possible in the kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> As a witness. I mean. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yes, yeah, um, but I think. I did like putting that thing of Roger Hilton about, you know, come on, you know, kitchen table, you know. I like putting that to the test and that they all this, the whole show, all my bits were all made on the kitchen table. So, you know, I mean, you haven't got your ease on your white wall, your, your lights, your, you know. Yeah, dude, what interesting news is that when Helen Greenberg went to Europe in the 30s when he, he saw modern European painting, and uh, after seeing all abstract expressions from New York, he thought Europe painted domestically. <laughs> and he, he used the term domestic, yeah. uh, which I, I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. But, is that uh, bad? Sorry? Is that bad? Is that bad? No, it's not. No, I think yeah. domestic is great, but it was it was the term that he used. I'm not joking. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but did he mean it? Yeah, 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 he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so sort of like that was uh, just it too down. small for him. It was pejorative then. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. It's not to know what to say, isn't it, sometimes, you know. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm in the desert, and he had a show, this was like years ago. He was doing a lot of, uh, you know, the uh, police not being nice to, you know, people. <laughs> and then he, he, was, he went up, I think we were praying for the summer up north, this was like eight, end of the eighties. And there was a counsellor that came to go him. And then it was all about the chap getting killed like that. And then the writer sort of said to him, look, you know, you're what? We're trying to move away from this, we're trying to make things. And then he said, oh, there's another room down there. Yeah, that's a great idea, that was easy. <laughs> Just like, come on, you know, you got to, you know, God, oh, it's what it is, you know. Like, um, you know I mean, you uh, have got my flower paint now. Good old man, you know. Trumpet in, but, you know, um, maybe uh, another subject. John, do you want to add anything? No, but, uh, yeah. Anybody yeah. ask a question? Yeah. Okay, so um, we shall uh, finish the conversation. Yeah. And we can continue downstairs actually with uh, drinks and uh, meatballs. Thank you very much. Thank you.